My name is Henry Gracie and I'm a third generation jujitsu instructor in the legendary Gracie family. Today, we're talking about self-defense the Gracie way. Ninety-nine percent of street fights are 100% avoidable. Think about it. The situation, someone comes up to you and says something to you, looks at you a certain way, acts a certain way, says so basically they act ridiculous, right? And they offend you. And if you only realize that the ignorant, uneducated comments or behavior of another person are not a reflection of you. Someone can say or call me whatever they want and it has no reflection because they don't know me. This person is acting that way because of their own ignorance. And if a nine-year-old kid came up to you and said, kicked you in the shins and said, hey, stupid idiot, go get a haircut, you're ugly. Are you gonna fight that person and beat them up, the little kid? No. And ignorance has no age limit. So if a grown man says the same things to you, think to yourself, oh, poor guy, the guy's having a troubled day or a bad life and uh, let him live on with that. But to let that person offend you to the point where you actually fight them, you're giving them control over you. Right? If they can anger you enough that you have to fight to prove yourself, they've controlled you and you've already lost the fight to begin with. The hardest fights are the ones you walk away from. You guys, believe in yourselves. Don't get into fights for no reason. And that's coming from a member of a family that makes his living fighting. And I'm telling you, there's no need to street fight anybody for any reason. Unless someone's getting beat up and you have to save someone's life or someone rushes you and attacks you out of nowhere, all other fights are avoidable, especially if you minimize egos and alcohol. All right. For the 1% of fights that are totally unavoidable, I brought in my brother from another mother and uh, Gracie Jiu Jitsu black belt and one of the head instructors here at the Gracie Academy, Alex Stewart. Alex, we need to talk to them about distance management because they have to understand that if they get into a fight against someone larger, it's not about beating the person up. And that's the people's number one mistake in a fight, right? Normal martial arts, what do they teach you? You stand here in front of the person, fight like a man. I throw a punch, you throw a punch, I throw a punch, you throw a punch. Before you know it, someone goes down. The fight is won or lost, depending on who you are in the equation. And it's over. It doesn't make sense. If you're fighting someone twice your size, you don't want to stand in front of them and trade punches. It's the most inefficient way to fight someone because as likely as you are to hit someone, you're equally likely to get hit in the process. So the Gracie philosophy, the Gracie way to approach the situation is to manage the distance and therefore manage the damage. Our idea is very simple. Green light, red light, green light. You wanna be all the way out. If there's an altercation and a disagreement and you know, someone is being angry or aggressive, even if it's a normal stance for now, you wanna at least be two arm lengths away because from two arm lengths away, they cannot abruptly punch you and knock you out or kick you without some kind of forecast or warning of their behavior. So from this distance, I'm safe. We call this the green zone, green zone. Now, this right here is the red zone. I'm within one arm length distance. If he strikes right now, I could get knocked out if he has the power behind it. And here's what's crazy. This is also a green zone all the way in. So the idea is, let's say push comes to shove, someone says something, you get offended more than you should, the fight is on, and now your hands are up. The idea is, I want you guys to stay all the way out all the way out, safely out of range. And you're not trying to punch and get punched. You're trying to stay safely out of range. Now, what if this guy doesn't follow me? Then we don't fight. But if this person aggresses towards me, you have to protect your face and step in all the way to the clinch. So you want to go from green to green while minimizing the time in the red zone, minimizing the chance of a knockout punch. And in doing so, you want to make sure that you protect your face on the way in. Boom! So that if he lands, he lands on your arms and not on your chin because all it takes is one punch in the red zone and you're knocked out. So if you forget everything else, remember, all the way out or all the way in. Now once you're in this close range right here, yes, Alex can hit me. There's no doubt that he can hit me. But these are just flailing arms. These aren't knockout blows that come from the entire body with your hips and your core and your body weight and all that leverage. So once you're in the clinch, these flailing arms are the least of our concerns. And here, depending on the situation, multiple attackers, you would want to disengage and get out of here as quickly as possible. So from here, you would push out, boom, and the fight's over and you move out and you're gone. Now, 
If you're in this situation and you want to take the fight to the ground, very simple. From this clinch, this body control, I'm going to lower myself a level, control his hips, not his high armpits, come down, connect, lift him up a little bit and fold him down. It's a body fold. I pick him up and I fold his torso. Once I off balance him, I come down into the most dominant position in the fight, the mount position. Now, this is where you want to be in a fight. It's very simple. Why? He can't punch, but you can punch. So he cannot do damage and you can if you want to. Now, this doesn't mean that striking the person from here is the recommended strategy. It just means that it's possible and it gives you a great advantage. And this person has very limited power because they can't cock their arm pack, they can't cock their arm back any further than this. So even if they hit me, he has no power in his punch. Now, the most common mistake made from a top fighting position like this, in a very basic sense, is that people are too upright and they're too aggressive. They get emotional, they want to hurt this person, so they're throwing punches from here. And the problem is the more narrow and aggressive I am, the more tippable I am. So you just push me off and oh, boom, now you fall off in the bottom of the fight. And then, boom, the punches are coming down. Let's go back. So if being tall and aggressive is the wrong strategy from a control perspective, then what's the right strategy? Immobilize, control, and exhaust the subject. But to do that, check this out. We're gonna get low, we're gonna put our hooks in, and we're gonna smash them with our hip pressure. Look at how my hips are driving onto Alex's, and my knees are floating right there. Show them my knees. See the knees right there? They're floating, why? Because all my weight's on Alex, and my hands are out, and I'm hooking his legs right here. So right now, he's carrying 100% of my weight. If he pushes me this way, I connect. If he pushes me the other way, I connect. So I'm constantly anchored onto him, keeping myself tight. So instead of just laying on top of Alex like this, bump your hips and throw me off, boom. You see how easily he pushed me off right there? Because I weigh 190, and if Alex can bench press 200 pounds, bump and throw, he's gonna escape my mount. So the question is, how can we have mount control that is more effective than the limit of our physical body weight, right? If you just lay on him and he can bench press your body weight, technically he can throw you off. Is it possible, is it conceivable that someone who weighs 160 pounds holds someone down who weighs 200, 220, 250 pounds? Is it possible? Not without jujitsu because he can bench press your body weight. But check this out. Alex, do me a favor. You have your black belt right here. Use both hands, grab your belt. Get a solid grip on your belt. Very death grip it. Now, without moving your hips, bench press your belt. Alex's black belt has more mount control knowledge than 99% of the human population. What does the black belt understand? It's not about body weight, it's about connection. The belt is connected to him. So what I'm trying to teach you guys is when you mount on, watch the, no connection, connection. Body weight, jujitsu. I'm connected with my hooks and with my hand. Bench press me. There's no way, because to bench press me would mean to bench press both of us. And that's not possible. Am I making myself clear? Crystal. What else do you need to know about maintaining mount and what the benefit? Talk about the psychological effect that happens to this person. Sit up because it's serious. <laughs> um, you just have to imagine a much bigger, stronger, more athletic person, or even more athletic than the person like in Henry's position that he's rolling, that he's acting out, is that me, the bad guy, bigger, stronger, heavier, trying for dear life just to throw them out, and you can't. So psychologically, he's already mentally lost. Right. Not even that, but he's embarrassed, if, not even with the people around him, but with the, per the smaller person. Yeah. So he's already defeating himself slowly, slowly, slowly until he gives up or opens up something else. You can imagine. You get in a fight, you mount on top of a larger person, you just hold them down and they're going crazy because you understand concepts of hooks and hips and connections and they can't push you off for their life. They can't put you off. Think about what goes through their mind. Psychologically, they're done. And once the person taps out in here, having them tap out out here is so easy. Do you guys understand what I'm getting at? This is how you win a fight without fighting, without beating someone up. You get a guy who gets held down like this. The countless stories we have of students mm -hmm. who've used these tactics to immobilize someone and be able to defeat them without ever hurting them or even submitting them are countless. The, story, the big guy says, okay, okay, I give up. Whatever you want. Police officers arrest the guy. They hold him down effectively with our techniques. I give up. I'm under arrest. You're cool. Whatever you want. They feel the control. And when someone feels that level of control, there's no need to fight. I always say, if someone were to get into a fight with me or with Alex in a real street fight, that's the luckiest person in the world. Because we're not going to hurt them, we're going to tie them into a pretzel, we're going to make sure that they're safe and uninjured, and then when they cooperate, we're going to let them up, shake hands, and go have some watermelon juice. <laughs>